the Bucks will make it. I mean, they're the they're the worst of the best. I mean, the best of the worst. You know what I'm saying? The NFC the NFC South is just bad. On today's Top Shelf Tuesday edition of the Yacht Coaches Podcast, Dr. Adams and the OCP team of correspondents recap NFL Week 12, discuss more quarterback drama across the league, review Dr. Adams strictly for entertainment purposes only picks, as well as previewing Week 13 of the NFL season. Welcome to today's show. Greetings and salutations, and welcome to the Odd Coaches Podcast. I am your host, Dr. Keith Adams, and with me today on our Top Shelf Tuesday edition is our cavalcade of stars, reference from the 1950s, starting off with the team captain for life, Will Cotton. Will, how are you doing today? Doing great. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. All right. And, uh... The uh, unofficial benefactor of the Odd Coaches podcast, Brian Bobian. Brian, how are you, sir? Well, thanks to Deron Payne and Will Fuller, I'm fantastic. All right. And America's favorite official and administrator, Robert Abney. Robert, how are you, sir? I, I, as always, sir, I'm living the dream. Family was here for Thanksgiving. We had a great weekend. Uh, representing my New Mexico military is two Broncos. They're playing in the Wool Bowl on Friday. They got a bowl game. Life is good, man. All right. So uh, <laughs> let me jump into this. Okay. So games of interest. So I'm going to break this into two as we uh, do on our Thanksgiving episode. Uh, so Thanksgiving Day was a lot of fun. <clears throat> Uh, the Bills and Lions was an entertaining game, and it was probably the first entertaining Thanksgiving game from the Lions in years and years and years. Uh, the Cowboys and the Giants, uh, they uh, definitely uh, entertained throughout. Uh, Mike King is not overly worried, um, but he does. I'm, I was looking for the quick text. He does want them to play better, but uh, that's what coaching looks like because the Giants were in the game much longer than they should have been. And then the Patriots and the Vikings. Vikings got another win. So I enjoyed uh, the Thanksgiving games. Now I want to get your opinions on a few things. Okay, Will, the Browns are over the Bucks. It's a day of upset. <laughs> Will Tampa Bay make the playoffs? What do you the, think, Cotton Man? The Bucks will make it. I mean, they're the, they're the worst of the best. I mean, the best of the worst. You know what I'm saying? The NFC, the NFC South is just bad. I mean, the Saints didn't even score today. And they lost 13-0. to It wasn't like they got whooped like 34-0. Like, so I think the Bucs will make it. They'll be one and done. They're going to be – like they get a home game, and that's about it, I think. But Okay. All right. And then, Brian, the Jags beat the Ravens. Will the Ravens actually make the playoffs with the uh, AFC East doing so well and Cincinnati and them are keeping pace? Will they be able to make it through? What do you think, sir? I mean, every week it seems like they they struggle to get started. Something happens, you know, they they turn it on in the, the second two quarters and then they fall apart in the fourth. Like it's a, it's almost you can you a book you can reread every week. And they're going to – the Bengals are hitting their stride. Cleveland is playing better now. Deshaun Watson's going to be back here shortly. They're going to have a quarterback again. I mean, they're going to be in trouble if they can't if they can't get into a groove. And the running game that was supposed to be so daunting never materialized. Um, I, just, I, I mean, they're going to they're gonna have a tough road ahead. And Brian, thank you for that segue because we've got more quarterback challenges. And Robert, I'm jumping with you because Brian gave you the segue. You're an administrator. Jacoby Brissett just beat Tom Brady and the Bucks. He's a nice dude. Everyone likes him. He's playing well. But you're about to put in Deshaun Watson, who's a lightning rod, and you're going back to Houston where he was. Tell me, how are you dealing with this, man? Clearly, the Browns don't care because they're putting him in. I mean, he, he's going to play. Um, the Texans aren't going to be because they can't. Is Rex Burkhardt uh, still there? What's that? Is Rex Burkhead still playing or Burkhardt? Uh, or? Yes. Yeah, that's 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 <laughs> if, if he's your running back, you're in trouble. Okay. Um, 
<laughs> but I mean, Ed, they're gonna they're gonna play him, and this week is probably not going to be an issue. But I just. I, I said it last week. I, I don't understand why you would intentionally want to draw all of that attention, why you would intentionally create chaos for yourself by signing this guy. And he may help them make the playoffs in the end. I don't think they're going to make it. There are too many good teams in the AFC. And I think you're going to have to go 11 and six to get in. Um, but, you know, he, he's going to play. Jacoby Brissett, he's a good dude, but Deshaun's going to play. All right. I'm going to stay with you, Robert, and talk about Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers this week said he has a broken thumb, and that could be one of the reasons why he hasn't played well. Uh, Will's my former player, and he knows that I would say the sun was in my eye. I had the flu. I slipped on a banana pill. Paulie was the ninja. He didn't move. Excuses don't get the job done. I'm going to ask you again, Robert, are we pitching this guy and putting in Davis Mill? What's the name of the uh, quarterback that they drafted mm-hmm. early? Unless, unless his thumb falls off and he's unable to hold the football, Aaron Rodgers is going to play. Okay. What is the quarterback <laughs> name? Jordan Love? Jordan Love. Jordan yes. Love. All right. Okay. All right. Well, Justin Fields is out. He uh, has a separated shoulder or broke up, whatever. Uh, how long are you holding this guy out? Or as soon as he's ready to play, you're going to put him back in line spot? I'll put him in, in the, and put him in, in the ice. He's done for the season. There's nothing to prove. You've seen you've enough. Really, I've seen enough. I've seen enough. I know what I got to tailor my offense. I got to see what players I got to go pick up in free agency and draft. Um, I've seen what I, you know, the, 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 the Bears aren't going to make the playoffs. You know, right now, guys are just playing for tape. They're playing for contracts, playing for um, bonuses, things like that, which is great, you know, because you want to have, you want guys to compete. But um, you're not doing, you, you, I wouldn't do it. Uh, especially a shoulder, you know, shoulder, you know, and you and you play in sh- shoulder field and that place is basically like concrete. You know, that kid lands on his shoulder and all of a sudden it's a bigger issue and you're a quarterback. So shoulder, I've seen what I got to see. We'll see you next year, Justin. All right. Brian, I want you to put your administrative hat on because you work for the New York Jets. Zach Wilson said all the wrong things and he got benched. And then the guy who came in for him balled out and they won. When do you go back to Zach Wilson or A, I don't care if he's a second pick, he's done. How are you handling that, sir? uh, So they're fighting for a playoff spot. Um, and if you think that the guys, the second guy up is going to give you a better chance to win, this is this is not a league that you can wait on, right? I mean, you can't wait and hope he hope he does it. Um, so he sits until the until the other guy doesn't give you a better chance to win. And I mean, this was I think this was an anomaly. I don't think he's going to do this every week, but um, I mean, at this point, it wasn't like wasn't like um, he Wilson was injured. I mean, he just uh, just as pride. <laughs> they benched him. Uh-huh. And so he's not losing his job because of an injury. He's losing a job because they think that this next guy has given them a better chance. So you go with him. All right. Well, with that, fellas, uh, we're going to take a pause because I don't care about those other quarterbacks on my list. And <laughs> when we get back, uh, we're going to have a super size edition because the fellas can pick from Thursday or Sunday the best thing they saw over this long weekend of football, and we'll be right back on the Odd Coaches Podcast. There is an old business adage that says, what gets measured and monitored gets done. It is also fact that deadlines for action. That is what the CKA Save Project Academic Monitoring Service can do for student athletes. Measure and monitor their academic progress to improve their grades. Our academic monitoring services provide ongoing academic support for student athletes for a designated period of time. Our academic success coaches work with student athletes on time management and organizational skills, along with improving their ability to self-advocate. Every few weeks, our academic success coaches meet with student athletes to assess their academic progress, as well as provide ongoing academic advising. If needed, student athletes have access to CKA learning specialists who provide virtual core subject academic support for student athletes. For more information, visit us on the web 
at www.ckasaveproject.org or schedule a free virtual consultation with Dr. Keith Adams by email at cka at cka.saveproject.org. Welcome back to the Odd Coaches Podcast in segment two. Uh, it's called this week's best this week because, man, the games are on Thursday and Sunday. So, Robert, what was the best thing you saw this week? Man, Dallas looked really good on Thanksgiving. They, yeah. they don't. They don't always do. They don't always play well on Thanksgiving. But man, they they looked really, really good. They looked solid. All right. Yes, they did, and the pay window looked solid too. All right, <laughs> Ryan. What was the best thing you saw this week? Uh, how about the Chargers coaches, coaching staff, uh, throwing caution to the wind and going for two there with 15 seconds left and coming out, coming out of Arizona with the win. I, I think it was in Arizona. Was it in Arizona? Yeah. yeah. Um, so that was I, I was surprised to see that, and it, it worked out for him. And anytime you beat Cliff Kingsbury, I'm not mad at you. Cotton go. Man, what was the best thing you saw? Commanders are keeping the pressure on the Giants. And they're keeping them on it, you know what I'm saying? And hoping they know they slip, they lose, they lose another game, and and a ton of uh, division games are coming up, right? So uh, yeah, could be very and yeah. The, and the Giants next week a buy, and then the Giants again coming out of the buy. Yeah, that's stupid. I don't know who scheduled that, but that's so what. But whatever, that's going to be huge, regardless of it's going to be the, the wild card. So keep creeping. Commanders right. going up, Giants are sliding. So. We're going to stay with you, Cotton Man. What was your biggest surprise this weekend? My biggest surprise were the Jags, man. The ja- I mean, you know, it's tough to watch the, the, the Ravens struggle. But, man, we'll talk about the – I saw Trevor Lawrence have a drive that I've, I've seen back in college. I haven't seen this glimpse. <laughs> I mean, the guy was hitting everything, and he was everything in stride, and everyone was – when that team plays and they play focus and they play like they did today, they could be a dangerous team. I don't know if they can do it week in, week out, but man, that was that that was big for me. That was I liked it. I enjoyed that game. All right, Robert, what was your biggest surprise? Watch out for the Bengals, man. They're figuring it out. Watch out for the Bengals. <laughs> hey, mental note: Jags and Bengals. Okay, Ryan, what about you? Uh, I think the Jets uh, were the biggest surprise. I know they were playing a fieldsless Chicago team, so they're not going to give you the same kind of look. But um, backup quarterback coming in and playing that way, playing that well, um, is a, a bit surprising. Um, and maybe the Jets are a little bit more for real than what I thought. Well, the the, the word on the street was Zach Wilson was holding them back. <laughs> and then they go out and, and play well. So. <clears throat> I'm going to stay with Bobby and Bobby. And what was your biggest disappointment? Um, my biggest disappointment was the, uh, oh my goodness gracious. I'm trying to find it here and I'm not finding it. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Buccaneers. The Buccaneers were, um, every pundit was banging that three and a half, um, saying that there was no chance that that Brady and the Bucks weren't going to cover and Cleveland couldn't score and they couldn't stop anybody. And that, I, I mean, they just look bad. Uh, yeah. And uh, the, the way Cleveland was talking about Jacoby made me stay away from that game because they were talking about him lovingly, like you know, what a great guy he is. And, and we're so happy to have had him. You know, so I'm like, they're going to go play. So I don't trust any of this. So I get you. Will, what was the biggest disappointment for you? Um, I don't know. So there was, there were, there were a ton actually, but I, I'm going to stay with something that, I, so I believe probably Denver losing to the uh, Carolina Panthers. That was wow. ugly. Um, Russ has Sorry, totally Q. lost. Hey, <laughs> Russ has totally lost that team. Um, you know, the guys are arguing. Uh, guys are getting like waved because they don't like Russ. The offensive linemen are, are pissed off with him. You know, I think he's just a prima donna now. I think, and and you know, it sucks that people said that in Seattle, and everyone was like, "No, not 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 Russ, who shows up to you know music awards and all." Like, no, not him. And then all of a sudden, all these are creeping out. But you know what they say, Coach? Winning covers a lot of things. So, 
they were winning forever. And then now they're starting to lose. And people are like, oh, yeah, Russ is a jerk. You guys didn't know he's a jerk. Like, <laughs> I heard I heard he had I heard you had to, like, go to his ma- as, as a teammate. He makes you go through a manager to talk to him. Like, how 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 big of a jerk could you be? Like, why would you even, like, come on, man. So that's for me was the biggest appointment, man. They had, they had a lot. And they gave him a whole ton of money. So that Check's was, clear, was, man. Check's hey, clear. Hey, yeah, yeah, hey. God bless the, the 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 Wilson family. You know they're good. They're good. But Denver country, not time to ride. All right, <laughs> Robert. What about you? What was the biggest disappointment? I, I think there's there's two. One is the Vikings laying an egg again. I, I you know clearly they're not as good as we thought they were. Clearly, and I was the one who was saying that maybe they're okay. Hmm, no, they they're not. And the other is it looks like. Whoever manages to get to seven and ten is going to win the NFC South. <laughs> well, didn't the Vikings win? Yeah, they did. They didn't. They didn't overly impress. Did, did I? Did I miss, okay. Yeah. You, you know what? You're right. Ignore that. Let's <laughs> let's not talk about the Vikings. Maybe they are pretty good. I don't know. But definitely <laughs> the NFC South. The NFC South yeah, will go with seven to ten is going to win that division. We can All add right. in. We can add in the Ravens, who who continuously we're going to add in. They're just not getting it. You know, they're just not. It's falling out the wheel. Things are things are not looking good. All right. So, Robert, what should we look for for next week, man? Man, I, what what do we what do we got? I don't even know what we got. I mean, if we've got division games like the the Giants and the Commanders, is that is that next week? That is next week, if I'm not yeah, mistaken. The go. Giants and the Commanders, uh, and and several other uh, top flight matchups. Yeah, there, but, uh, there, well, you got you got that, and I think the other thing is, you know, I I think the clear the if it hasn't already started, you know, the the Cliff Kingsbury and Nathaniel Hackett. <laughs> I, well, I don't know what the lines are on on DraftKings, but you may want to start checking that first coach fired. Kingsbury, <laughs> what, what what are you looking at? I don't okay. know. All right, Brian, what about you? What should we look for for next week? Um, so I I think we're gonna see whether the Dolphins are as good as they're playing. Uh, they play the 49ers next week. That's a game that oh. I'm, I I'd like to see. Oh. Um, and then uh, the Eagles Titans Titans didn't um, weren't able to come through this week, but it'll be interesting to see. Uh, how the Eagles fare against a, a, another decent team. Okay. God, man, what about you? What should we look for next week? Uh, on top of those, we got the Commanders Giants, like you guys talked about, but Bills Patriots, it's going to be a big game. It's an early one, Thursday. So ah. we'll see. Yep. They're supposed to be, uh, traditionally, they're supposed to be low scoring affairs. So that could play in the Patriots' hands. And both teams had seven days mm. off, like it's a regular well, week. Where are they playing? In New England. Okay. Well, I mean, a weather weather could be oh, weather? a big way. Oh, I'm not even sure. I mean, I mean, you're you're from Buffalo in New England. You're getting cold and cold. <laughs> so, well, I think unless somebody got a dome, <laughs> no advantage. No, nah, it's Thursday night in the in the, in the Northeast. <laughs> Good enough yep. to be. Yeah. All go. right. So when we come back uh, in our final segment, we're going to do things strictly for entertainment purposes only. And thank you again to the state of Maryland for giving me way too many options. We'll be right back on the Hot Coaches Podcast. The reviews are in for Dr. Keith Adams' book, Finding the Balance, My Personal Journey to Academic and Athletic Success. College professor and student athlete academic expert, Dr. Lisa Rubin said, there is nothing out there like this book. So I do hope people will pay attention and give it a read. Former George Mason standout Fowler and Campbell said, Consider this book an opportunity to work directly with Dr. Adams, just like I did. I assure you that there will be something you can take away that will be useful to you throughout your personal journey. Ryan Waite, a recent college graduate who is a software engineer, said, I like how the book is based on research, which makes it good for general students as well as student athletes. The book serves as both a memoir to Dr. Adams' 30-year academic and athletic career, as well as an instructional guide to assist student athletes, parents, coaches, teachers, and administrators navigate through the challenges of finding a better balance between academic and athletic success. The book includes over 15 personal stories and anecdotes from Dr. Adams, along with numerous former players and colleagues 
from a variety of sports and endeavors. You can order your copy at www.ckasaveproject.org. From the main page, simply click CKA Save Project Services and order the Find the Balance book. For more information, contact Dr. Keith Adams by email at cka at cka.saveproject.org. Welcome back to the Odd Coaches Podcast. In segment three, we are talking about things strictly for entertainment purposes only. And uh, we sneak a dig in at Russell Wilson. <clears throat> That's good enough, too. So my top five, they're about to play, but the Eagles have one loss. So I don't care. You got one loss and everybody else got two. You're the best until you got two, and then we'll start evaluating you clean. Uh, I have uh, KC. At, at two because they deserve to be two. Um, they're playing extremely well. Uh, I have the Cowboys at three. Uh, I still have uh, Buffalo at four, uh, and I have Minnesota at five. I'm going to go with that. I'm still waiting, like Brian mentioned, for Miami to do something to impress me. Not that they care. Uh, and Baltimore, Tennessee, both lost today, so I'll, I'll update my rankings on Friday. Oh. In terms of picks, it was kind of funky for me this week because I really invested for Thursday because I was in Las Vegas. Shout out to the Circa. And if you guys want to sponsor us, we're happy to come and let you sponsor us because I have nice things to say about the Circa Hotel. So we'll, do I was, show, we'll do a show we'll, there, right? Let's we'll do a show. Do a there, show. Kelly <laughs> will come and we will do it live. I can get <laughs> Kelly there too. I haven't talked to him, but if it's about going to Vegas, Kelly will jump in. So I was four and one on Thanksgiving, but it's kind of like stacked. So I picked Detroit plus nine and a half. And I always make fun of Detroit because they do play hard for this guy. And I laugh with Will because you're supposed to play hard, but they really do compete for this guy. And they're starting to get wins. And that's the worst kind of team because they're like in it to win it. So uh, I took the under for the Lions and the Bills. Uh, that came through. Uh, my two play was Buffalo and Dallas because I just, this is the time of year where Dallas sets you up, sets you up, and sets you up. And then when you push all the money to the middle, they sell on you. And, you know, uh, and then my three play was Buffalo, Dallas, Minnesota. So I had a nice trifecta. Uh, but as any good gambler does, I had one safe play. I had the Giants in the upset. Uh, because if they had won that one, that would have covered all of the bad stuff. <laughs> that so uh, with Maryland having sports betting, not only will you can look for my picks on uh, Sunday mornings on social media, but starting December 5th, you will see my daily five. So I am practicing now, and Will gets to see me practice, so he's my behind-the-scenes guy looking at uh, how I'm stinking up the joint. Leave the NBA alone. <laughs> Leave the NBA alone. It's my football show. <laughs> so- Stick up the NBA. <laughs> it's so bad. Anyway, season-long win totals. Uh, did Pittsburgh win the day? Pittsburgh plays tomorrow. Pittsburgh plays tomorrow. All right, Jacksonville won, so that's four, and the over-under for Jacksonville was six and a half. Uh, Buffalo uh, won. I believe they already have eight wins. I think I I, I put that out already. Uh, so, yes, Buffalo has eight wins. Uh, the over-under is 11 and a half. That's looking good. Uh, Chargers won, so I believe they have six wins now. Uh, and their over-under was 10 for some reason. I got hooked on to the Chargers early with uh, the quarterback, so uh, good for him. Uh, Minnesota is over 9. They are at 9 now, so the next win puts me over the hump. Uh, New Orleans, they lost, Will, if I'm not mistaken, correct? New Orleans? Uh, Yeah, they didn't even even score. So they're still at 4 wins, and I have New Orleans over 8. Uh, Philadelphia plays tonight as we tape. They are over nine, so their next win gets me over the hump. And San Francisco, uh, if I'm not mistaken, they won. Is that their sixth win or their seventh yes. win? Yeah. That is their seventh win. Seventh so, win. Uh, yes, go following. Uh, thanks for the pick. And in four more wins, they got me too. All right, so my week 13 games to watch. I do want to check out the uh, Washington Commanders against the Giants. Uh, I would be remiss if I didn't mention 
Uh, and I mentioned this to the fellows before the show. I was a little underwhelmed with the uh, tribute to Sean Taylor. Uh, Sean Taylor Ooh. is around the same. I, I saw the whole career from college through. I, I loved watching him play and they botch <clears throat> tribute attempt after attempt after attempt. And man, it, they're pitching underhand and they're still missing. So I'm sorry. You, you guys want to yak about that at the end. You guys can, but I'm just disappointed with that. But anyway, the Jets play Minnesota. I do want to see if uh, the Jets can play two good games in a row and they're playing at Minnesota. Uh, Tennessee is going to Philadelphia. That's always a tough place to play. Miami versus San Francisco. And yes, Robert, we are on the same page. Kansas City is traveling to Cincinnati and that's going to be fun to watch. That's going to be fun to watch. So as we close. what, what What about the Steelers and Falcons? Come on. I'm skipping Steelers and next week. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna do something else. <laughs> I mean, I'm a yeah, <laughs> play video games or something. Eh? Watch some NBA. Um, NBA is just killing me right now. But uh, you'll check the, that out on the Wednesday show. I watch the Taco <laughs> Bell Classic in, in basketball or something. Whatever goes early, catch <laughs> All right. So Brian, any final thoughts, sir? As we close out, um, I watched a little bit of the. Chiefs game today, and I, I mean, they were playing a essentially quarterbackless Rams team. But um, Patrick Mahomes makes throws that no human being should be able to make uh, ever. And <clears throat> I think you got to put the Chiefs up there at the top of the rankings, um, just because that very rarely is quarterback play going to solely win you a game. Um, but he can make plays that nobody else can make and keep plays alive long enough that even middling receivers are going to be able to get open. So I think he changes the scope of every game that they play. And uh, so I think the chiefs have, they they're going to, they're at the top of that uh, top of that board. You are correct. And I'm just anti, but everything you said Uh, is 100% correct. My show, my ratings, (laughs) but yes, correct. All right, Robert, <laughs> any closing thoughts, sir? <laughs> well, I, um, one game that you didn't talk about that, that I think is going to th- – this is going to tell us a little something. Dolphins at 49ers on Sunday. That That's going to tell us a little bit about both of those teams, I think, because uh, 49ers are, you know, have been playing a lot better. Dolphins have been playing well. Let, let's let's see what we get out of that one. And, you know, the, the, you're, you're starting to get to a point now where you have that that commander's Giants game. I mean, we're probably not there yet, but the, the second time they play, that's going to be a loser. Go, that's going to be a loser leaves town match, I think. <laughs> Never a bad time for a wrestling reference, especially out of Texas. OK, <laughs> and God, man, any final thoughts, sir? Oh, man. So just what Brian was saying, man, the Chiefs are the number one team. He didn't make to he didn't have to mention that they have the number one hardest schedule in the NFL and they're nine and two. And the Eagles could also what nine and and nine and one easiest schedule in the NFL. Yes, 100%. We made yep. fun of that. I think they was like 30 or 31. No, they were 31 and 32. They were tied with like the Giants or something. And right. the NFC East had the last four of the uh, easiest schedules. So all correct information. One loss. you number one. Okay. That's it. No rationale or anything like that. But as we close, this will air on Giving Tuesday. Um, and the CKSA project is a nonprofit organization designed to assist student athletes and the people who work with them through education and professional development. And the Odd Coaches podcast serves as our vehicle to the world that we get to share our thoughts, ideas about life and have fun with sports. And uh, But everything we do is generated around supporting student athletes and making sure that they have all the options and knowledge they need to make great decisions we hope so if you have the opportunity feel free to donate either through our website at www.ckasaveproject.org venmo or cash app at ckasaveproject 
Uh, or you could do the traditional snail mail. We don't mind. P.O. Box 94 is 77, Silver Spring, Maryland, 20916. So on behalf of my tag team partner, Coach Mike Franchise Francis, who is always on assignment Sunday evening, do that homework, Coach, and stay offline. Uh, I'm Dr. Keith Adams saying thank you for listening and or watching the Odd Coaches podcast, and we will see you on the sidelines. Till next time, take care. Peace. The Odd Coaches Podcast is sponsored by the CKA Save Project. The CKA Save Project is an industry leader in providing student-athlete academic and athletic support. From assessing student-athletes' academic and athletic skills to measuring and monitoring student-athlete academic progress to improving student-athlete time management and organizational skills, the CKA Save Project provides wraparound services for student-athletes from middle school through college. For more information, visit us on the web at www.ckasaveproject.org or schedule a free consultation with Dr. Keith Adams by emailing cka at ckasaveproject.org. We hope you enjoyed today's show. The Odd Coaches Podcast drops new episodes every Tuesday through Friday on most weeks. Make sure you subscribe to the Odd Coaches Podcast on Apple Music, iHeartRadio, Podbean, Spotify, and YouTube. Follow the Odd Coaches Podcast on Twitter and Instagram at Odd Coaches. Follow Dr. Adams on Twitter and Instagram at CKA Save Project. In addition, follow Coach Mike Francis on Twitter and Instagram at Coach Franchise, spelled Coach F R A N C H I Z E. For more information about the CKA Save Project, please visit them on the web at www.cka.saveproject.org. See you next time on the Odd Coaches Podcast.